Getting started today with this Storm Legion sculpt. It is uh, one of their sniper models. I believe this is going to be in the mini crate. Um, so to begin, I'm going to take my Exile Blue and I'm going to start marking out on the armor which areas are blue. And then I'm going to go back and decide on what color I want to be my white base or just my base color. So adding a little bit here to my palette. Not a whole bunch. I don't need a whole bunch. I'm just going to be marking armor plates by blocking in colors. That way I'll have freedom to work once I know things are in the right spot. And once it's in the right spot, I can think about light and shadow a little bit more and not worry if I'm painting the right thing the right color or not. I'm going to block in all my blue armor and then we'll be back for the block in on the white. Once you get your blue areas blocked in, we're going to go in and add a very neutral gray to mark out our white. So this would be a 50-50 mix of white and gray. And whenever I talk about mixes, when I say 50-50, it doesn't mean how much paint, it means the color. So we're going for straight down the middle gray. Reason being is this white doesn't have any blue or tan to it for the Storm Legion. It's just a very, very neutral gray. And the accent to the blues and the armor is actually their gold. So that's your warm color that you'll be putting in. So just mix up a gray, black and white. Don't add any colors to it if you want to stay in the Storm Legion theme. And then go in and block in your colors where your, your whites are going to be. Once we've marked out where our white areas are going to be in the boots, knee pads, here on this chest plate, I'm going to take some Thornwood Green. I've added that to my palette. This will be the basis for any of our clothing areas. For the straps, I'm torn on whether or not to go black or to go with a lighter tan since she's a sniper. I want to make sure she stays stealthy. But I think the thorn wood can be worked up either to a, a, red, a reddish brown or either a keep it in the green tones military for her scheme. And she's got these little two part straps here where I'm going to let the cloth kind of show through there. So I'm going to go in and hit all those. A lot of areas on the, the arm that's holding the gun up from underneath that need to be hit with that color. Now that we got our greenish browns locked in here on the pants, avoiding these straps just so we know where our differing materials are. Not much on the back. The cloak's actually going to be a camo cloak. So we're going to have to decide on on that. Um, the majority was over here on the inside of the arm and then down on the belly under the chest. Uh, next, we're going to take our Reaper Mahogany and block out where our golds are going to be. Now, this model is for Privateer, so that's one of the things that I do to make sure that I'm doing what they want. <laughs> I'm getting the colors in the right spot might have to go back and adjust a few areas so while our after I send this image into them I can go back and paint the face because that's something that can be done without really having to uh, do any back and forth sometimes there's back and forth on those things but that's usually just small little iterations of skin tone or eyeshadow or what kind of look they want the face to have. And blocking in a face, getting all the, the highlights and lighting sources is something that could be done kind of pre-work. Those little small adjustments are really easy to go back and do. But taking that mahogany, there's a few areas that are going to be gold on the armor as well and these little eagles that are all over. I'm going to go ahead and paint this one, but it'll have a different texture to it, make it look kind of like fabric since it's on her shoulder. She's even got a little bit peeking out under here. So we'll dress all those areas and get back to it. 
I got my gold mapped out and my picture sent off. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start on the face now. So base color for the face I'm going to start with is a Parasite Brown. Going for a tanner complexion with her. So this is just going to be a base coat. And then we'll follow up with a, a light wash to just get started on our shadows. But I want to make sure this goes on really thin. I don't want to get any paint streaks built up. So I'm adding a little bit of water to my paint because it was acting sort of thick. Probably going to do a couple coats, maybe three. Again, just a base color to get started with the flesh. Kind of a brown, tannish color. Looks like it'll be pretty good for the scheme that's, uh, that we're going for. We've got the face blocked in. Took realistically about four coats to keep it nice and smooth so we weren't obscuring details. I'm going to try a paint I've never tried before, um, the Army Painter Crusader Skin uh, for speed paints. It's got a nice sort of tan tone to it. I guess that's what they mean by Crusader Skin. I'm going to go light to start with. But it's not it's nothing we can't adjust later if we need to. I like to put my contrast or washes on heavier and then pull them out where I see fit. So working fast because I don't want to create any lines or little dry spots on her face where the speed paint will overlap. I think that light laid in some nice shadows. Maybe not dark enough but I think for for studio paint, that's pretty good shadow basis to go by. And then we can go in and accentuate some things here in a minute after this dries. Well that stuff dries surprisingly fast, so I'm going to take a little bit of this dark flesh, mix it with our base color, the Parasite Brown, start developing some highlights on her face. So first obvious place, probably easiest place to hit on camera is the nose. Bridge of the nose and just kind of draw a uh, little upside down T on each side of the face. We don't have to do any spot highlighting yet. And then cheekbones. She's got a pronounced cheekbone in the model file. You can see it's shading itself pretty well. An actual figure. I'm gonna come in, lay that in real thin. I start bringing it up, and then along the bottom of the jawline, and I'll have to go back off camera, tidy this up just a little bit. But there are basic highlights that run down the face, as far as. You have a uh, strong shadow underneath your cheekbone, under the eye, runs down beside the mouth, and usually I have a shadow uh, connecting the corner of the mouth to the nose, and then a pronounced highlight right on top of the lip. Same with under the eyebrow, right on top of the eye. And then over here where this eye patch is, we're going to have to do a little bit of work. I still have a wet area of wash right here. You can see the glisten there. Uh, but we're going to continue to build this up by working up to our skin tone. Add possibly a little bit of yellow. Let's see how that works. Um, and then some white to increase our highlights. Um, I'll finish out doing this layer. Make sure everything's golden and then we can move on to the next step. I went in and smoothed out the transitions of the blends on the face. Now I'm trying to hold it really close to the camera and fit my paintbrush under here. A highlight on the nose. So we're bringing it up another half step toward the dark flesh tone, the model color. 
Uh, to blend out areas, what I do is I'll, I'll go in and apply like I did this cheek fade. I'll uh, have a loaded brush, put it in there, and then just kind of lick the tip of the brush to unload pigment. If you don't want to do that, you're going to have to figure it out on the palette. And I like my brush, so I don't know how to... No, you can just water down paint on the palette, but... <laughs> I like being able to control how wet the palette is just by licking the brush or wet or how wet the paint is on the tip of the brush. So again, I'm picking out a few features here to accentuate the face. I have to watch out for the chin on this model because it's really, really close to the armor. It's actually touching this piece. So I'm making sure that I'm getting just chin and not armor because I want to maintain that shadow but working slow because I'm still waiting on an email back I'm just getting that that face locked in I think the, the skin tone is working really good for her color scheme though so we'll take this color, finish it up, make sure everything's blended outside of the camera, eyeball blended, but I think the highlights are placed in the right spot at least. Alright, I went in and added pure dark flesh, which isn't very dark, to this area in the nose, and then this shadow where you have the, the facial feature, that's just painted in. So this line almost like a seven shape right under the eye a curve and then down to where it meets the corner of the mouth and then across the lip keeping the middle of the lip slightly darker because the nose shades it and then right here at the top of the chin I didn't I hit right here with one of the steps down in face color skin color just to add a little bit of that facial feature where you can see the sides of the mouth coming down and then middle of the nose down and then pull down for the nostrils instead of going all the way across so you get that nostril actually accented in the figure and then right under the eyebrow here just a little point highlight so we got the top of the eye for the eye color we're going to take that same dark flesh tone and some white because eyes aren't white they are skin toned. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna try this. I'll try not to have to rework everything. I can get in there. Luckily, she's got an eye patch. There's only one eye to paint. I knocked out like a little bit of my shadow here, so I'm gonna have to. Put that back in but that's pretty good for trying to paint while leaning back so i can see under where the camera is all right i dotted the eye off camera because that's hard to do um, for the eye patch i'm just barely highlighting it up gray it's kind of going to be the same color as the armor straps so i'm making sure to hit these raised areas around the eye patch and around the headband here and we'll bring them up almost to mid gray. Uh, just layering these up ever so slightly with a neutral, neutral gray. Let's go ahead and work on the pants and leather areas, clothing area. So we base coated with our thorn wood green. We're gonna try this hardened leather uh, speed paint, which comes out almost black on the palette. So it does have some brown tones when you, you move it out. So we'll see how dark this gets. Might have to do a lot of highlighting to bring it back up. Uh, no. Shifts it toward the brown tone really nice. Again, I haven't used these before. This is not a sponsored critique. We just had a set in store and decided to try it out.
I'm going pretty controlled with my application. Building it up in the shadows a little bit more. Seems to flow a little bit more like a paint, less like a wash, but then again, these are really, really small areas. But it's shifting that thorn wood down to pretty nice, rich brown, which we'll have to compensate for when we start highlighting. I gave her a white boot, that's why the top of this is gray here. It runs through the leg. Go ahead and apply it to the fingers here. And I'm going to finish up all the other areas and we'll look at highlighting. Once that's dry, we can move on to highlighting. I'm taking the Thornwood Green and that contrast paint and mixing it up. Now, this works as a really nice coating acrylic once it's been mixed with some acrylic it's just almost like it's thinned down for a layer so I can go in and start highlighting now to bring it up further I've already highlighted this section there I'm going to go in with khaki and I can mix my khaki in See as I mix it around here with more pigment, starts making it a little bit more neutral. And I go in and highlight this fold, and that's about as high as I'll bring it. The cloth doesn't need to be super interesting or over highlighted. It just needs to look like dull cloth with light hitting it, right? Yeah, a lot of little areas to hit with this. Go back to my original step up here. Pull some highlights, leave my shadows. This sort of shifts almost to the mid-tone now. leave my deeper shadows on the inside of the leg there. And work it up a step. And continue on with that. With the white armor on these guys it's a very natural highlight. It's not non-metallic or anything. It's just a fade, almost like they're sort of a, a plastic-ish armor. So I'm seeing if my base color that I've remixed matches up. Looks like it do. So I'm going to take a little bit of white. Again, layer-based highlights. mix it into my base color. I still have my palette from the other day so I have my base color over here that I can reference. And I'm going to build up just very smooth shades up to normal lighting points. A good tip for getting that is it's just how the model naturally shades itself. So if you take a, a strong light source that you have somewhere on your desk and point it, you can get a reference of how the light just falls over the object. So uh, these, these top facing areas will be very bright and these flat forward spacing areas facing will, uh, will be bright. And then always keep interest in mind when you're painting as well. If we paint too naturally it can get boring over time. So I'm going to layer this up and kind of show you the result. hard to do these minute layers on camera. I can definitely describe how to get them there. So I'm always pulling my brush stroke toward where my highlight's going to be. And then down here I'll probably highlight the bottom edge just because there's going to be a deep shadow underneath this little leg plate. But we'll finish this knee pad and then I'll show you the result. 
Erica. I've worked this knee pad all the way to white, trying to avoid the non-metallic look and just go for a nice smooth blend at the top. I used uh, some glazing here uh, just to maintain brightness on the pad. So bringing it up from the bottom, always terminating and picking up where I want my light to end. I decided to highlight again the bottom. I think I said that before. That's why I said again. Uh, pulling my highlight here, going up to bright white on the rivets. Um, but to glaze my white, I'm just taking a pure white and watering it down a good bit. Um, unloading my brush so you can see the white on my thumb, making sure it's not like flowing off. And then going back and doing a couple brush strokes leaving it be. Um, I can demonstrate here with a little bit of white. So it almost ends up being like your parchment color. Just a very milky sort of white. Um, and then just little hits. You can see that it's leaving just a minute amount of pigment but that helps blend. And you can go stronger with your glazes if you want depending on where you're at if you're in a deep shadow go light if you're going for a highlight then go a little bit stronger with your glaze just finished on the white and started on the hair and realized that I was not recording that so I took a little bit of a desaturated blue here mixed a decent amount of white in it it's a uh, this color here you can see it on the hair um, put a little bit of black in it to desaturate it further, gray it out, because I just wanted a very blue white for the, the hair sticking out. So you can tell that this color here and this white here are separate, right? This tiny bit of blue changes the feel of what's going on with the hair here. And I'm gonna do a base coat and highlight it up to white. And that's how I approach white hair. Just put that blue into it. Sometimes do it, it depends on the objects around it, really. Um, but for this one, real careful and deliberate. Even more careful and deliberate since I'm doing it on camera. I don't want to hit anything I've already painted. And I'll go in and uh, finish up. I'll show you how I do the highlights. I have my base coat for the hair in there and I turned my palette around so you can see this is my base color this is my next layer I'm just gonna ride the high points of the hair here almost like edge highlighting these little noodles sticking out of her forehead um, and then I'll go back and increase that one more step and not go quite to white just a really almost almost white blue and that is the hair with the final highlight on it treat hair like non-metallics you want that final curve to be kind of or the highlight to be that that apex of your curves for um, for hair, any sort of shiny object. Uh, oh, I'm noticing under my camera, I can almost see my layer heights from printing. See those little tight lines? <clears throat> anyway, starting on the gold. Um, mahogany brown, sculpturous brown, and white. We're also going to use a little bit of black in our shadows, but I'm only going to put that in at the very end. So I'm going to start by doing something I should have done off camera, which is adding colors to my palette. And I'm going to add a little bit more white since my white's got a lot of blue added into it. Clear the clog. Oh, come on. This is why I should have done this off camera. I'm going to start with a little bit larger of an object to demonstrate. So, I take my mahogany, grab parent pools of color. Mix up a very yellowy brown here. And then find the, the apex of this basic 
cylinder shape. And layer up. And then on this flat panel, just to keep it interesting, we're going to do a very quick highlight. And by quick, I mean it's going to be a really short layer up to this lower panel here, like light's kind of shooting off the bottom of it. Progressive yellow layers here. You can see on my palette, these two colors are pretty separate. And I trust my palette because when I apply color, sometimes they apply in a different look. And then I go just inside my previous layer. It's a very opaque way to paint. The trap with this technique is that sometimes you don't leave yourself enough room to get your highlight in. So be careful about that. I'm going to start my edge highlights just so I see sort of my non-metallics happening. Because edge highlighting is a big part of non-metallics. I'm going to highlight this all the way up to our standard sculpturous brown or yellow. And then I'll show you the white. Once you get to your yellow step, mix up your, your white and your sculpturous brown in a new location away from your mahogany. If your mahogany gets into this mix or you continue it down, it muddies it. You want that bright luminous yellow to mix with just the white. And we're applying almost a pin highlight here and then down at the bottom continuing an edge highlight around. Yeah, trying to do really detailed work on camera. Boom it. I'm doing it for you. Let's round it out just a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll continue the highlight in progressive edge highlight layers. I'm also going to go in and highlight the bottoms of each one of these. You can see where I've already started here. These little vent holes. The light would catch that edge and it would brighten it up. So we're going to continue to do that. Um, all the way up to white. And when you get to your white, that's when you get that kind of illusion of a shiny metal. Once my white's on there, I want to take a little bit of mahogany and black over here. Just because the, the Storm Legion models, from what I've been looking at, have almost a very black, dark brown. And I'm adding a shadow into my deepest browns that are away from my yellow. Just to add that little bit more darkness and shift in the metallic and be really sparing with your white and your bright colors. Those should go really quick as layers because you've already planned them out. You can see I have under here this little ring, got a highlight here, little tiny bits of like the bright yellow and then just the white up here and right there where your apexes are. This is like a really bright yellow color, it's not quite white. Um, and then adding my darkness. I might go in and add a little bit more back here for my shadow just to have that darker reflective look. Um, and I think I am going to do that. I'm just not going to do it on here. I've gone in and finished up all the gold areas except for the shoulder, which I'm going to make more of a fabric pattern instead of a hard metal edge. So I'll have a lot of streaks in here and texture that I add to. So for the blue, I'm going to use some colors that exist instead of mixing. I got my Exile Blue, my Signar Blue Base, and Signar Blue Highlight. I've already laid those out on the palette over here. The Signar, or the Exile Blue, is my base or my shadow color. Uh, and I've gone in and I've already based all my plates in that color. So from here, I'm going to take that next step up, not blend it yet, but just sort of mark out where my highlights are going to be, and then focus on blending after that. Again, as a studio paint, you don't go for dramatic lighting, we go for sort of equal lighting on all objects so that people can see the model. It's more about the model, less about the paint job. 
even though it still has to be a good paint job. So I'm going to go through here and mark out where I want my brighter areas to be on the blue and then get back to you. So I went in and finished one toe plate here just because I've never painted this color before and I need to experiment. So it turns out I need to add some white to my highest highlight. So I added two steps of white for edge highlights. These models are very predominantly edge lit. Um, so all the edges will have a strong highlight. Here you can see how low the coverage is for these blues. So it takes at least three layers, but that also means that they blend really well. Uh, so that you can one brush blend into your highlight areas without having to do um, any sort of mixing. They're naturally more transparent than a lot of blues that you get, which is nice to work with when you're trying to get really nice blended armor surfaces. So you can continue working this area up. This has the brightest color on it. You can sort of see one of the little layers here. Uh, but we'll blend that out as we go. All right, finished up the blue, gone back and added texture to this patch on the back. We're gonna ignore the gem for now because that gem is the same color as this energy color and there's two more here. And it's kind of a mint green for that energy color, like a phthalo mint. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go back and take these straps and address them. Give them a little bit of character, a little bit of color. Um, take my black, a uh, little bit of this blue here. And then take some white and just desaturate it some. So we got this very blue-black complementary to the, uh, the armor here. And come in and add some highlights. Just kind of following along in that lighting pattern. Pull two kind of separate streaks, keep it black for the shadow in here. Going in and just giving it character. And then I'll step this up a couple times. Probably not that drastic, that'll be like a final highlight. Go in between them. Keeping my highlights within my previous highlights. And you see how that's already helping that strap have a little bit more definition than this one down here. That little bit of blue-black. Rinse my brush since I've been mixing so much. And I grab this lighter gray here and just blend this out. Just hit this top edge and maybe a little bit down here just to bring shape to it even more. So just very subtle, very subtle highlights for the blacks. Um, we'll go in and hit all the straps around the legs. I don't think there are any, there are some on the arms here. Can't see any from this side, so we'll get all those as well. Um, it's almost the same thing that I did on the eye patch up here, just to give it some definition. Uh, see that shape and the little ridge that it has. We'll go in there and get that done. I've gone in and done our three layers over the black on the straps here. Pull the detail out on this one over here on this side. And then on this knife sheath here on her hip, we went up two more steps with the white, so it went a little bit brighter into our gray tones, uh, just to pull it out a little bit more to make it feel like a hard plastic or, you know, like a military sheath or um, utility knife sheath for that. Now we're going to start working on our non-metallics along the gun. We have these areas to address the handle on the knife. And the buckles here, and there's little grommets that run along this patch. Here, if we can get it to focus on one level, these little grommets that come out, we're gonna add non metallic for those. So, for that, kind of using the same blue black to build up a little bit more desaturated. So, I'll come in here. I'm actually going to use a little bit darker of a blue to keep it in that desaturated realm. And then, so I got my parent pool here. And I'm going to build up. Rinse my brush out since I just mixed a bunch of paint. 
and then go in and start layering up. Let's do a quick little clasp here just to kind of show the progression. I might we'll just work on all three of these real quick. So focusing on the bottom side, maybe pulling a few edges on the top, leaving a little bit of black right at the back. And I'm going to highlight this up to a, right above a mid-tone. You can go a little bit faster with your highlights on smaller objects because they'll naturally blend. Getting those edges in at the bottom and back, hitting these little top ones real quick. And mixing more white, progressively layering these brighter blues in. Really, really desaturated dark blue. And that's kind of your sky box, your reflection of blue sky. Trying to look at the, the model and paint at the same time. Might drag these top edges down so you get a progressive edge highlight. And these are all really close together, so highlighting them in the same manner. I'm going to take this yellow here, this uh, Cygnus? Cygnus yellow. Give it a shake. We're going for a really, really, really desaturated white, so I don't need much of that. Take my my yellow. So I have my value reference there with my very desaturated blue. Just take just a tiny bit of yellow. And see, even that's pretty powerful. So I'm gonna take another brush load of yellow, and that's more what I'm going for this here. And then take a little bit, just a tiny, tiny pinch of black to pull it down, desaturate it just a little bit further, and then come in and start adding final layer, final highlight. Here, that yellow being the yellow light source reflecting. in our non-metallics and then just a touch of white to end it so white in our bottom corner here and then a tiny pop at the top corner for a hard reflection on those little objects so we're going to go through we got the whole gun to do, so it's that paint process, maybe more layers for some of the larger objects like the stock. These smaller objects will follow along kind of like we did with the uh, the belt buckles back here. But it's a lot to build up, especially over these long stretches and deciding where to put our highlights. That's kind of as the process goes for me, for thought process wise. Um, so I'll come back and show you that once it's done in a few hours. Alrighty, we've finished the non-metallic on the gun here. We got our little belt knife. We have a little bit on the back, not as reflective as the front, also not as much of a focal point. The what are these things? Buckles <laughs> and the little grommets that are kind of holding in the. Uh, she stapled her her patch on. We're gonna go in. And I'm going to try some things with the energy that runs through here, that mint color. I'm going to start out with the, the mint green from Reaper for that. Probably wash in a few layers and then add white to it just to, to up the value. I need to add some water to my palette. I like to dip out of my palette when I'm working. I don't know why. I mean, it's just because it's not as dirty as my paint water is. Kind of create a uh, glaze, wash-like consistency so things will flow into the cracks and settle. And they'll dry fairly fast doing that too. I'm just aiming for these teeth here in the middle. 
can see a little bit of that color showing up in there, starting to brighten up. So it shouldn't take a lot. I might have, should have done this first before my non-metallics, but the paint models because I am not smart. Just got a good, good sense for color. So I'll wash a few layers of this in here, and then I'll bring up that color some more, or the value of the color with some white, make it look like a little energy, because we've got our little rail sniper gun here. I say little, things massive. I've gone in and added a little more blue to the mint green, just to tone it back. Mint green's kind of clashing, and it didn't look quite accurate uh, to the model, so I left some in there for highlight. I think I will add white to this color. To bring it up to keep it more in that energy blue a little less green uh, so if we go in and we start adding white and a little bit like this and i kind of like i went for a gradation where it's shifting in and out in the energy and then try and edge highlight these little energy cells in here and bring them up. Little gear teeth. Working pretty well. I probably need to go brighter. Trying to go brighter and maintain some pretty good saturation in the color. Kind of my thought process as I'm going through things. So seeing that a little bit more. Probably going to have to get real accurate with the brush and just tip the front of these with some some white. going for like a strong strong energy glow in the side of this probably even go in and highlight some areas just so it's like it's flowing kind of zoop, 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 doom, making that noise in my head uh, I'll continue working on that and update you on the progress uh, I figured out the look that I wanted and it's more of a mix of getting stronger with the um, mint green as I go up in color, so starting with the blue fairly thinned with a little bit of mint green to bring up the value for these areas here, one, two, three, and then, and that was kind of glazed over that original base coat of the mint green, very watery layer just to tone it back. Um, go in, highlight all the teeth, and then wash in some continual mixes of the mint green and the blue increasing the mint green as I get toward a higher value, more white into the color, until finally some spot white highlights here to give that sort of wave-like energy effect uh, pulsing through the gun. Uh, but yeah, just playing with it, touching up things here on the back, and going to start camo. So the plan with the camo is to start with a tan, probably start with a khaki, um, and then work the pattern in and then glaze the shadows. I'm tempted to, the belts, kind of thinking I want to be a different color, but I might camouflage those as well. I think I'm just going to camouflage everything and just uh, put in, drop in shadows, hard shadows for these uh, ridges in the cloak, because it's going to give it that more uh, paneled look or feel, uh, but starting with a base coat of uh, game color khaki on that um, inside and outside. I know sometimes cloaks have two tones, but I think starting with the tan on the whole thing, uh, give more interest to the front of the model, of course, because that's what we see. Uh, and then on the back, of course, it'd be a ton of interest because there'd be a lot of camo there. So I wanted to get a little bit farther along on this before I started describing it. Um, it is a process, and though you trust the process, it is a process I have not done before. I have not done a fantasy camo 
scheme in quite a while and not in these colors. Um, so what I've been doing is taking my reference, the shapes and things that I'm seeing and going for a more stylized look for this camo. Um, actually asked an AI to do a camo scheme and it looked really cool. It's like a combination of like leaf type shapes and swirls and different gradients of colors, sort of simplifying that down into um, base rounds, keeping those points and those kind of leaf shapes in there and four basic colors starting with the lightest four colors on top of the tan so five color camo um, so I mix the tan I started with this dark green didn't like how it was acting thought I needed to add some more private deer colors so switched over to the gnarls green much better coverage um, it's also one of the base colors by itself that you're seeing uh, here so that's the gnarls green these more rich but dark greens. Um, the brighter green here is Gnarls green mixed with Signar yellow. The this very very faint green is our tan or our khaki uh, mixed with I, need, I realize I need to scoot this up a little bit uh, working close to me but not close to the camera uh, the Tan and gnarls green is our light green for our cloak here. Uh, much better coverage again than the Vallejo dark green mixing with the privateer colors. And then my last one is the Bane, Crick's Bane mixed with black. And for the black, I'm using the uh, Pro Acryl uh, black. Gives more of a matte finish than most other blacks, so you get get almost that kind of chalky camo look and then I'm glazing in shadows and going back and reinforcing highlights with my my khaki and these colors adding a little bit of white um, but mainly uh, glazing shadows and making the base color the highlight um, complicated process very long process especially getting in here and repainting these buckles and things and there will be camo that runs through them and I've you know, gone through and shade. Sometimes I like to work ahead, skip close, develop a scheme. One, I wanna make sure that um, everybody at Privateer likes what's happening and that uh, I don't go and paint an entire cloak and then have to redo it. Um, so as far as developing shapes, let me take some of my green here and I'll have it on the palette, so. I know where my colors are on this palette. That's why wet palettes are so nice. You can go back to them for reference. Don't need that much. And there's our very nice light green. It's kind of the basis for our shapes. We're drawing negative space for the tan. So uh, now that I have like a little bit of reference of where um, and what kind of shapes I want for my tan, very amorphous, blobby, with like tails and hooks and things, I can go in and say, hey, I want to talk and wait, just outline a color, outline a, a shape, right? I want a hook here, and then it might travel up a little bit, and then have something that comes in, and then terminate. And I'll continue these patterns around the cloak. Instead of doing like a mirror inside and out, I'll just continue the shapes over as I develop. A lot of layers, a lot of smoothing, a lot of filling in and painting over things that were already painted, but that's that's okay for me. It's how my mind works and that's how I get a, a better developed project. And you can see that this doesn't coat very well, so I'll let it dry, go back, add another coat. I'm gonna lock in all these shapes for that camouflage. And if you're following along with me, again, it's a it's a trust the process moment. Like you start putting on this green, it's like, man, is this weird sort of, you know, mutant duck shape down here gonna actually work? And I think 
by just kind of narrowing it in and looking at that. It's like, yeah, you know, that looks, to me, I think it looks pretty cool. And um, I think it's a nice contrast to the model as far as being a sniper. Uh, but, uh, of course, we'll update and talk more as to the process uh, here uh, probably tomorrow because I've been working on this all day. Light green step is complete. Gone in and left where I want my tan to be on the figure. I'll turn it around slow. The tone is a mixed tone, so it, it changes. It varies just a little bit. Um, we're going to go back and glaze our shadows in. So that's not important currently. We're going to add some highlights too. Again, have everything saved on my palette as far as what tones I'm using. I'm going to go back in and start adding the yellow green. So marking out negative space in the light green, avoiding the tan because it's set where it needs to be. Finished out our yellow green here, if you can see the pattern. Covered up a good bit of the uh, pale green camo area. We're gonna go in and start adding our pure gnarls green to the camo pattern. Uh, and same same thing, you know, might cover up some of the lime green here and there to just get some cool patterning in. But for the most part, leaving the tan, leaving the lime green, leaving the pale green, and, well, covering up the pale green because that's kind of our uh, pattern. But just going with the flow of it and doing what looks cool, futuristic uh, sort of forest camo pattern that we've come up with for this figure. <clears throat> so applying that, might as well give a uh, demonstration, right? And then going in, I got a lot of lime green through here. And I kind of want to divide it up. So I'm going to do like a little bubble to follow this bubble here. Fill that in and then maybe hook it through because it's this pattern is a lot of swoops and little spikes sort of like what leaves look like and that's just a solid pattern and we're going to do that everywhere except for where I've already finished and get back finished the hunter green portion and now starting to go, I almost forgot to record. Um, starting to lay in the really dark pattern. So these are already here. I went in and added these. These are more sort of streaky hook shapes um, instead of like the larger sort of bodies. The green, um, the hunter green is more like a, of a leaf shape. So these sort of uh, bulbous looking banana leaves with uh, points on them added in in areas uh, got those in camo's confusing it's it's fine but it's confusing and it's tedious cuz trying to go slow and make good choices as far as randomness I had our teacher tell me one time that randomness is impossible for humans they always try to, try to find order in things and they're probably right i'll just bonk the camera with my head but this is uh, definitely an exercise in that vein. But mix of black and the Crix Bane base for these patterns. You know, darken this one down a little bit. And then we're going to take a look at shading, which I might break out the airbrush for. Alright, got the darker green knocked in. We're going to glaze in some hard shadows like I have here for the cloak and then I'm going to take the airbrush and knock in some kind of overall shadowing in here and go back and highlight some of these areas, do some edge highlights just along the top of some of these bands here and mainly on the front side. So to glaze, um, get a really really thin paint. Here's how thin that is. See, that's a that's a dark paint with a lot of black in it. Uh, really watery, kind of the opposite of uh, dry brushing. You get a really watery paint. You take a paper towel, unload, just like you would on a dry brush. See how it starts riding along the tops there, 
and then come in and just small incremental barely perceivable layers gives you that control now if it's coating too thinly you can always mix up more I like to work thin and work around the model and then come back and just do multiple layers and that patience pays off because the blends become much smoother and you can see where the brush is wetting the surface it is leaving pigment behind so it's hard to make a mistake with this step because of the low amount of pigment on the brush. If I take a stronger mix, and you can see how much more pigment's in here, and I go and add, you can see the effect is just a little bit more drastic. Now the trick to applying a glaze is getting the brush unloaded enough to where when you pick up the tip it doesn't drop a bunch of pigment off of the brush and that's why you dry it out. So I'm going to go back, add a few hundred of those layers and then we'll look at what we're going to do with the airbrush. I might test it before I film some, but I'm thinking that she looks really cool. The blue and green pops. All right, got my badger out. Got my cloak kind of dark lined in with those multiple coats of glaze. Um, I took, this is like 90% thinner. Uh, going through the airbrush, it is a very, very slight fade. Um, if I pull back at all, it's gonna spider immediately on the model. Um, and I don't wanna do that because it took a while to paint this. So, going in. Barely shifting some of the colors down into shadow tone with some low pressure. You can kind of see the wetness hit the model. I'm aiming right along here, right under these little straps. And you should be able to notice it getting a little bit darker now. I don't want to shoot from below. That way any sort of oversprays are gathering on the bottoms of folds. So you can see the, the darkness of that lower panel sort of coming in. Real subtle. Tiny, tiny trigger pulls. Go ahead and blending it out. I don't want to get rid of my camo. I just want to add some shadow to it. I'm doing the back of her head now a little bit. Hitting the the crest of that fold here. You'll be real careful on the front side. So this is the Sotar 2020 that I'm using. It's a really, really low aperture. So 0.15. Really only for super thin paint. And inks. You can see those shadows. Maybe you can't see those shadows because my camera's stupid. Um, building up there, naturalizing that cloak a lot. Um, it's kind of, you see how quick this stuff spiders? Like it's really, really, really thin. It's like no coverage whatsoever. Just enough to tone. Leave that highlighted area. And that'll be go be easy to kind of go back and uh, highlight over these shadows. Because even some of the natural colors will, will highlight. 
fairly well. We just work in different areas. And it's really hard to notice a change when you're working with something really thin like this, so it's... Like you notice it all at once, like this tan down here is much darker now. Um, but that's good, because it's camel cloak. And so the inside of this cloak needs to be pretty dark in shadow. It'll also help silhouette the model to make the, um, the gun stand out a little bit more. So I got a little bit of a spider right there. Just a tiny bit too much air. Too much liquid. So I'm just going to blend it out. Getting in a nice dark shadow there. It's a little bit harder to see mistakes on camo too, so there's that saving grace. Shooting into that deep crevice there. I'm gonna go right in here. Super careful not to hit anything. It's not supposed to be hit. Yeah, I might do a couple more layers here off camera, just because I, I need to look at it closely. Uh, and I don't want to make you sit through that, but I'm getting pretty close to done. We'll look at highlights here in a minute. All right, highlighting on the cloak. I'm gonna take a little bit of pure tan for my shaded areas. Just barely edge highlight there, just to pull out that edge a little bit. And anywhere that I see an edge in this shadow, I'm just gonna reinforce that edge. Now when I get up to the brighter spots, I'm going to take a little bit of white, which I don't have up on my palette. Yeah, I got a little bit on my wet palette, but it's kind of dry. So I add a little bit of white. Don't need a lot. And just go around and do all the tan areas. Right? Don't worry about any of the other colors or like switching as you go. Just hit all the tan areas. So I got this, this edge that was, you know, it's kind of highlighted before, but just for demonstration purposes. I'll run a little bit of a bead of an edge right there. Hit the top of that fold just a little bit. And then over here on these high spots. Trying not to get too monotone here. And then definitely up here on the head. So we're going to go back and do this for every color, like basically the pure color in the shadows because it's going to be bright enough and then up the value in your brighter areas by adding a little bit of white. It's okay to desaturate it. It's camo. Camo doesn't have like a ton of saturation. So, um, just making that little more readable because we want the model to maintain its readability. That's one of those objects that's kind of unique, right? It's like you don't want it to uh, be like super blended like armor, right? You want it to be a little more naturalistic because it is like a big cloak. Probably like something that she just throws on. Uh, but going through going to highlight, share the result, we'll talk about basing after that. Uh, before we move on to the base, we've got a few things. The collar here, I need to highlight blue so that we have some of that armor highlight. Back in there, just to show the, sh the shape, uh, these gems here need to be painted, and they're going to be painted the same color as the uh, 
railgun energy. There's one right here on the back that I was missing. Um, so again, that's our mint and our uh, our blue, our signal highlight. I need to shake this. All right, got our blue. So what I like to do with gems is start with black, so they're already black. I'm going to take some of this. And a little bit of black and use what I have on my brush to just create my dark tone real quick. I don't need a lot of it. Alright, I've got that first layer in. My phone ran out of memory. So I am going in with a pure blue just so I can show you guys this. process so going further to the side it's kind of like it, it's like a moon waxing waning sort of deal where you paint like the phases of the moon in the different colors if that makes sense for a gem easier said than done on camera and then adding increasing amounts of white to our mixture. For really small things, you don't have to blend as much as you think you would. There. And then finish out with a white dot. I might go back and refine this because I'm just demonstrating on camera. But fairly convincing gem for a quick tutorial. For basing we're using Earth from Vallejo Game Color and use a larger brush. I already got some on my palette here and just cram that sucker down in there. Make sure you fill all of the voids in the texture. But just by blotting it around and stuff and get it in there gotta take a minute it's boring to watch so while that's drying i just wanted to tell you this is the tamiya soil effect um it's kind of expensive but you get a lot um it's hard to apply unless you water it down even further than what it is in the uh container just wet your brush and it makes it way easier to spread around um, but when this is dry we're going to put a wash on it earth shade time so take some of our agrax earth shade Get a bigger brush, just slather it on there, move it around, make sure you're getting your shadows in. And then wait an hour for it to dry. Time for a little bit of dry brush. We got, I used the hair dryer to kind of force dry this. Um, taking some tan here, just a pinch of yellow. Think of it as a uh, adding salt to your vegetables you don't want much and then unloading the brush for a dry brush and real quick deliberate strokes usually at the same angle that way because if I go back and forth it will coat more which is okay for the front um, because we always want the front of our base to be just a little bit brighter than the back. Creates interest. I'm going to do some circles here. And then reload. Unload. Go back to it. I like to, you know, make sure that the brush is pretty dry. Desiccated. When I'm dry brushing. And we're going to do one more layer. After this, we're going to add a little bit of white to our color mix so I can just brighten up the, the tops a bit. And then add some grass. Exciting. All right, got everything dry brush. Going to add a little bit of white. Dry brush with that color. You can see me mix it up there. Unload again. Same brush. Didn't wash it out. Just adding a little bit more brightness to the front of the base here. And slowing down around the feet. I don't want to paint over the, the nice stuff. 
All right, now I'm going to go crack a pack of uh, some static grass. So I got the Gamer's Grass Meadow set. Hashtag not sponsored. Uh, whoop. Sorry for the roller coaster. I'm going to use this lighter green. That's kind of the, the standard. And I just super glue these on. Like I'll peel them, pick a few, do a little super glue. I'm going to put some wash at the bottom and then we're going to dry brush the tops with a little bit of tan just to make them look a little bit deader and that's kind of the, the look that we're going for with these. Got those stuck on and while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm just going to do a black ring on the base because leaving it sloppy like that does not look nice. I'm just taking a nice solid coat of black going to trim it right up to the edge. Always come at it from the base side. Don't try to come in like this or you will get stuff on your base. A lot easier to do it this way. Once your super glue is dry, I'm going to take a little bit more of this earth shade and then touch it into the bottoms of the grass just to darken up where the root of the grass is. It kind of works as a way to make the seam a little more blended where the grass is coming out. Just letting it soak it in like a sponge. Come at it from the back. Poke it in there using the nice liner brush. Liner brushes are great for washing. And then once that's done, where'd my flat go? Where's my flat? A little bit of flat here. Take some of this tan. I do a pretty broad load on the brush and then sort of brush over the tops of the grass. Blend it in a little bit, give it a little bit of that sort of dead at the end look. from one brush to another brush stand up the grass a little bit more and then I'm gonna hit this with an army painter matte varnish and hopefully go take some pretty pictures hope you had a good time watching and there's probably a long video I don't know how many segments I took um, but if you have any questions feel free to ask I'm happy to teach and happy painting. Alrighty, iteration time. So not done. Um, I went in and took some clippers and trimmed the verge. So now our grass is a little bit smaller. So we can see more of the model. Um, also some face iterations, more of a red lip and some eye shadow. So I've got my red here. I'm using the... Yeah. Where's that? It's, it's it's that color. Um, got a little bit added to the palette. Make sure it's nice and thin. Ugh. Testing myself doing these things on camera. It's like body posture is really important while painting. So with a red lip, usually just do the bottom, and then a bright highlight with some white. See if I can reactivate that white a little bit. I might just use that color right there. So get you a nice bright pink and then get you a highlight on the lip which would actually be on this side since our lights kind of concentrated right here. Lick the brush a little bit, make sure the paint's moving good. A little bit too broad of a highlight, too much. So we'll go back, 
and I'm gonna try to hit the underside of it so that it's just like a little white dot. I have to work with it a little bit more. The red isn't covering the white, so the highlight's not toning down. I'll just broaden it out here. And I just have to knock out this under underside because the highlight on the lip usually breasts like on the crest of the curve. All right, had a customer walk in, sorry. Um, I went ahead, let's see if I can get this steadied. So for the lip, I had a little bit more red to the bottom and then for the top lip, to knock down this highlight, I reinforced the shadow. And for that, I used this mahogany that I already had on my palette. Um, so that the, the Reaper color mahogany really helped to define that, uh, that lip shape. Next, we're gonna add a little bit of blue eyeshadow. So in order to do that, I'm watering down, I wonder if you can see it in the corner here, yeah. Uh, watering down some of the Signar blue highlight to create a glaze so that we're not just putting like stark straight blue onto the model. And again, whenever you're using a glaze, be careful to unload your brush so you're not doing straight watery soppy pigment, especially above an eye. Come in and just add a little bit right here above her peepers. So she's got like a little bit of blue eyeshadow there. And then I'm gonna rosy up the cheek a tiny bit with some red. Make sure we add a little bit more white to it. And again, as a glaze, not as a just dab it in there color. So we maintain our, our blends and our highlights and we're just adding a little bit of red to the cheek. In right under this cheek here. Not gonna worry about the one. The eye patch is covering a good bit of that cheek. Just giving her a little bit more of a rosy complexion on that side. Now they did mention uh, eyeliner, and I'm not gonna do that on uh, the video because it's hard to do. All right, got it in there right above the top of the eye. Took a few seconds, but you can see this little streak here. And what I did is took a little bit of this mahogany black, mixed it right here, thinned it down just a little bit so it glided off the brush and I can maintain a good tip and then just pulled it whoop, that way. Um, probably not that fast. I was really careful and slow about it. But that's it. New iteration to send and probably, hopefully, what you're going to see as the final pictures on the Privateer Press website.